Welcome to Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drogheda. We're looking at the Old Testament. We're looking at how Jesus is all over the Old Testament. He is the theme of the Old Testament and he is the lens by which we need to interpret both the Old and the New Testaments. We're in the book of Numbers and in Numbers chapter 24, we have this strange account, well, it begins before then, but it carries into chapter 24, this strange account about a prophet named Balaam, a prophet who uh, obviously can communicate with God and hear from God, and yet is not part of the people of Israel. And uh, he is hired by the king of Moab to prophesy against the Israelites. Uh, the only problem is every time he opens his mouth to pronounce a curse against Israel, he speaks blessings over them instead. Eventually, the king of Moab gets so fed up, he says, I'm not paying you a penny. Get out of here. And Balaam says, OK. But before he goes, he prophesies one more time. And again, he prophesies blessing. Now, where where he tried to curse God, but then blessings came out of his mouth. This, of course, is the basis for that famous verse that we love to quote from Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 2, that the Lord turns curses into blessings. But in Balaam's fourth prophecy, he then spoke about a star and a scepter that would arise out of Jacob. The scepter, of course, speaks of kingship. It's one of the symbols of kingship. The star Maybe not a lot of people there didn't quite understand what that meant and what it was saying. But there were some scholars in the East who liked to gather wisdom from different cultures and lands. And at some point they put into their library this record of what Balaam had spoken. Now they could well have got that record whenever the Babylonians sacked the temple and destroyed the temple and carried away not just the Ark of the Covenant and, and all the precious metals, but also carried away copies of the Word of God. So it may well be that because of that, the book of Numbers wound up being in a library out somewhere in one of the lands of the East. And there these scholars read about the star and the scepter arising out of Jacob. And so centuries later, they saw this strange star that was hovering and moving about above Israel. And they followed the star. And because of this prophecy of a star and a scepter, they decided that that star must be a sign that a king was being born in Israel. And it says that the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew that they came and they said, where is the one who is born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. You know, I love this because these were just, uh, these were not Jews. They were, they were not believers in the true God. They were just people who tried to gather wisdom from different sources, and mainly from pagan sources. But somehow they had got hold of this verse from Numbers, and they all immediately understood that it was referring to the promised king. That would be born in Israel. I love this. You know, many Christians read the story of Balaam and never see a reference to Jesus in it. But these pagan philosophers, the, the Magi, we sometimes call them the wise men who came at the birth of Jesus, carrying gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. They could see clearly that Jesus was all over the pages of the book of Numbers. And, you know, God, whenever God prophesies something, it will come to pass. And this greatly encourages me because the Bible is full of promises that God has made about you and about me. And it's part of the ongoing story of Jesus Christ that God will work through us and fulfill his promises in Jesus name. God bless you today and join us again tomorrow for another Take 5, your five minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drada. Yeah.